Hey everybody, David here, and today I want to talk about some movies that I watched during the weekend because why not, you know, we're, a lot of us are stuck at home and uh, <laughs> we all need something to watch. So maybe these are some movies that I can tell you, hey, I checked these movies out. Maybe you want to check them out too, even if I like some more than others. Uh, you'll never know. Um, first of all, every night I like having a marathon. And uh, because so I always usually if this was like a normal world, you know, how we used to go about things, uh, I would always base my marathons on the Blu-rays that were coming out during the week. Uh, since we don't have too much of that right now, uh, I'm just going random and I'm just doing whatever marathons I feel like. So last night I finished my MCU marathon, which went for 23 days or 23 nights. Uh, I, I finished it off in chronological order, like I always do, uh, with Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, Friday, I watched uh, Infinity War, then Endgame on Saturday night, and then Spider-Man Far From Home last night. So that, that was cool. But I, I do watch a couple of other films throughout the day, especially when I'm stuck at home. Um, specifically Saturdays and Sundays, because uh, my place where I work... Uh, to make income for to pay my bills and stuff like that, um, it's still operational. Uh, we are uh, the company I work at is um, uh, is a manufacturing company, so we uh, do stuff that are are still mandatory. Uh, but but <laughs> Saturdays and Sundays, I'm still home all day. So uh, just like everybody else, I can't leave the house no matter what. So. Um, I watch some movies during the day, obviously. Sometimes I'll watch TV shows as well, but I think the movies are the things that people, if you're a fan like me, it, they're easy to watch, right? Two hours of your time, especially if you're home all day, why not? So here we go. On Saturday, so before I watched Endgame uh, uh, that night, I, I thought, man, what can I watch? Uh, you know, and I realized I haven't seen... The Mighty Ducks sequels for a while, right? So if you haven't seen The Mighty Ducks, The Mighty Ducks are, you know, movies aimed towards kids, but they're on Disney Plus. And the first one, a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for, right? It's a, it's a pretty good kids film, right? I would give it a seven out of ten since uh, I did, and I decided to watch the second and third one also. Uh, I know there's a cartoon show too, but they it had nothing to do with the movies, and it was like ducks from outer space if I remember correctly, and they were hockey players, and I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> I, it wasn't for me at the time, because I think by that point I was getting over some of those cartoons. They were starting to interest me less and less as I was getting older. Uh, but the movies I did see, and the first one I think is, is still a pretty decent uh, kids film, family film. Um, and because I, I still go and watch it and enjoy it, I think there's some heart there. Um, the second movie is where things start to go down a little bit because the second movie just lets do what the first movie does. So it feels a little bit cheaper in that aspect. Um, and the third movie ha has the same issues, but a little bit more. Uh, it, they're not terrible movies. I'm not going to say they're terrible, but th they're not pieces of... They're not the most amazing things you'll see. Let's just put it that way. But look, if you if you have kids or if you can get in touch with your inner youth, I'd say go ahead, watch them. They're fun little movies uh, that are not bad. And it's cool seeing Emilio Estevez uh, in something because those were the movies, I think, that, that kind of made him a household name. I know he had The Breakfast Club before that and a couple of other movies. But uh, I, I think it was... The Mighty Ducks that m most people in my generation, I guess, would remember him the most from. Um, maybe. <laughs> Other than being Charlie Sheen's brother. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're they're enjoyable for what they are. I, I, I put them in the same league as like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or a lot of those other 90s Disney movies and maybe 80s that they used to do uh, quite a bit of, those kind of family comedies. So... There you go. If you want something to watch, there's something. Uh, on Sunday, though, I kind of mixed it up a little bit more. It wasn't just like one complete trilogy. I uh, decided to watch a different group of films. Uh, the first one that I watched in the morning was Lost in Space. Uh, I had remembered that 
Gary Oldman was in the film as the villain, and Matt LeBlanc from Friends, who plays Joey, <laughs> uh, was in it as the Han Solo-ish type character, I guess. Um, the, the actor that I'd forgotten was in this movie was actually William Hurt, who would later go on to play uh, General Ross in the MCU. Uh, he, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, in The Incredible Hulk, then he returned again for Captain America Civil War, and he was in Infinity War and Endgame, and he'll be back again for Black Widow. Uh, yeah, he was. He, he looked a little different because, uh, but as soon as his voice came on right in the beginning as a narration, I was like, I know that voice. And then he came on screen. It took me. I, I had to look at IMDb, and it was him. It was like, oh wow, that's William Hurt. He looks. A little different because his beard wasn't white and and his stash wasn't white. He like yeah, it was and he was a little skinnier and and uh, more younger looking. And funny enough, it was like ten years before he would be in the Incredible Hulk. So, uh, but yeah, the, the Lost in Space obviously based on a TV show that I believe was in the fifties, and now they have a new show on Netflix, a new Lost in Space, which. I thought I heard good things, but I guess not rave things because I don't really hear too much about it. Uh, but it, it can't be as bad as this. I, I'm not going to say it was terrible, but it wasn't great. I'll say that much. Um, it's pretty forgettable once you watch it, uh, to, tell you, to, to be honest. But look, if, if you want something to check out, a, a sci-fi film, maybe you might like it. Who knows? I, I don't want to tell people never to check things out because you'll never know. I don't know what your taste is. So you might enjoy this film, and I don't want to turn you away from that. But uh, yeah, if, I don't know. If you're someone that's currently watching the new Lost in Space series, you never seen the movie from 1998, I, I'd say check it out to compare it to, so see, see what the comparisons are like. Um, with that being said, later in the afternoon, early in the afternoon, I'll say, uh, I watched Enemy of the State, which also came out in 1998. This movie stars Will Smith and uh, Gene Hackman, John Voight, uh, with uh, appearances from uh, Jack Black and Seth Green um, and some other familiar faces. Uh, the small ones that you, you'll you be like, oh, I recognize that guy, but I can't put my finger on it. Uh, well, you'll, you'll find out. Um, yeah, Enemy of the State I thought was a really good film. I, that, that movie I remember liking back in the day, and it still holds up to me. So I still enjoyed it just as I, much as I did back then. Um, so this is, Enemy of the State is definitely a movie I would totally recommend. It's a conspiracy thriller, uh, definitely holds on to that conspiracy, uh, idea of the government keeping track on us and, um, them trying to frame this guy and, uh, put him, uh, because he has something that someone gave to him, uh, that he, he doesn't isn't even aware about so they tried to ruin this guy's life by destroying his marriage and making him go bankrupt he can't use his visa anymore uh, and he is on the run from the police so uh look i thought it was a great movie um and that's one that i if you've never seen enemy of the state before i would say check it out finally the last new thing on my list is uh, eddie the eagle I, you know, this movie came out in 2016, starring uh, Taron Egerton and Hugh Jackman. I've never seen it until yesterday. And I gotta say, this was a great film. This is a mini review coming from me. Uh, <laughs> I, I was surprised at how much I, I liked it, uh, really loved it. I gave it an 8 out of 10 by the end of it. I always rate my uh, movies I've never seen. Uh, on IMDb because I like to keep track of what I watch and and what I rate it, and yeah, uh, this movie was was great. Uh, it's definitely the kind of movie that like gets to me because I can relate to it a lot about someone who has these big dreams, wants to be somebody, and wants to fulfill what he loves, and um, he eventually goes through these hardships. You know, his father doesn't really believe in him. Although, by the end, you know, I, I don't want to spoil too much if anybody else has, haven't seen it yet, but it does, it, it did make me tear up quite a bit throughout the film because, and made me laugh also. It's not like a tearjerker type movie only. It's a funny movie. It's a, a very nicely high-spirited film 
that uh, I really got a joy of. And Hugh Jackman and Taron Edgerton are always great in that movie. I mean, in, in everything they do. Uh, so yeah, uh, I that that's a movie. If you have, haven't seen it, like I didn't, I totally recommend it. I got my parents watching it before I watched it, and they told after I got done watching it, I called them up. So what did you guys think of? Uh, of uh, Eddie the Eagle, and they really liked it as well, so I was happy to hear that. Yeah, it was a it was a cool film, and uh, so yeah, that those were a couple of the movies I saw, and uh, some of them, most of them, I recommend, except for uh, Lost in Space. If you don't see it, you're not missing anything. Uh, but um, this week, t starting tonight, I am going to be watching uh, having a Star Wars marathon. So. Uh, I just want to invite anybody that uh, who wants to watch all 11 Star Wars films. Most of them I know are on Disney+. Plus, and the good news is The Rise of Skywalker is going to be on Disney+. Plus. They just announced today, uh, May the 4th. So if you haven't seen The Rise of Skywalker yet, Disney+, Plus is going to have it. So there you go. And uh, starting tonight, one movie each night. I like doing it that way. Um, and on the weekend, who knows, maybe I'll watch other things and then I'll do another video like this. But if you want to join me, I always, I, sometimes I'll live tweet during the movie because I, I've seen the movie so many times. I can, I can tweet and, and watch at the same time. So tonight, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Uh, tomorrow, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Episode 3, and so, uh, uh, Solo, <laughs> Rogue One. Episode 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So uh, it will be that order, chronological. Uh, I'm not including the Star Wars Clone Wars animated film because that's not a film to me. That was three episodes stitched together. That should have been direct-to-video. So um, that, as far as I'm concerned. But with that being said, I, if you don't join me, that's cool. I'm, I'm going to watch these movies either way. Uh, <laughs> but if you do, awesome. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about my journey watching all these films uh, next week, even though I've seen them all b before. Uh, but I'll watch maybe more movies that have nothing to do with a marathon, uh, just to talk about movies that, hey, I haven't seen in a long time, and maybe I haven't reviewed them. So here are some mini reviews for some movies that uh, I never really talked about on my channel before, and now I finally got to. And uh, there you go, you have a new one in here too, Eddie the Eagle. With that being said, guys, I hope this video helps. I hope you guys like it. Please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take care.